Hey guys, how are things? We're up here in Wicklow today. Spring has definitely sprung, although it's a little bit cold today and a little bit windy. But you can see the regrowth, the real life coming back into nature. What we're doing today, we're going to discuss the unconventional, the unconventional in knives. Um, I'm always being hit up with questions on Facebook uh, about this and that, and we always end up talking about knives somehow. So, talking to a guy during the week about this knife. Now, I've used this extensively over the years. It's the it's the first version of this knife, and it is the Habless SRT self reliance tool. And basically, what he was saying was he wasn't going to go for this knife because it was too unconventional, and he finds it very very difficult to maintain an unconventional blade in the woods so it got me to thinking about the review wasn't even meant to be about this because we've covered this before but it got me thinking about this knife in particular because although it is a very unconventional knife and I like the design of it very much it's probably uh, the troglodyte in me okay I like this knife I like its uh, prehistoric caveman look but although it is unconventional it's not really because it has a single curving arc of a blade um, anything that's unconventional about this is on the back side of the knife not the part where you would have to maintain now it's not a scandy grind people say it's a, I've, I've heard people talking about it being a scandy grind it really is uh, what Hablis call it is a pseudo scandy but if you can see this scandy grind here it comes to about here and then there is an extreme secondary bevel after that so for me it's a very very stout saber grind which makes if you look at the tip here um, I have had this tip buried into trees um, and at the end of the video we'll show you there's an old sump over there it's a great way of getting bugs and wood lice and stuff like that if, if you're looking for something for fishing um, 3 16 inch thick and it's 1095 steel so I'm gonna batten with it because that is one of the primary functions of a survival knife now I know there's going to be YouTube police there and they're gonna have a go at me now about battening with a survival knife but here's the thing uh, yes it's better if you have a full sized axe uh, very seldom do people find themselves in survival scenarios with full sized axes in fact if you're walking across through a farmland or a field and a wicked dog comes at you you're probably going to have your work boots on or your hiking boots on it would be far better if you had runners on but you're still going to run away from the dog so in essence we have to make the stuff that we have work and a survival knife is not really all that much different to a bushcraft knife other than it has to uh, stand up to the rigors of battening because that's so important and such an important task in survival and um, so uh, you know there's nothing wrong with a stick tang knife but uh, for a few ounces extra in weight you can have a full tang knife that can be so much more serviceable um, as a survival knife so this is heavily seasoned and we're going to try and get through some of this here uh, it's 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 too big to actually take in one in, in one swipe heavily seasoned now the anvil on this is brilliant for battening This is so seasoned, it is having difficulties, I'm not going to lie to you, but as we slice through it, we will get there. And you can see the knife 
it's, take, it's, it's taken a lot of strain there and even twisting on occasion we've we've knots here that we're working through so slicing the pie is how you would um, break down something of this size and with a little bit of patience you can get through it as I said that that anvil works extremely well so the purpose of this is to get to dry firewood that's what we're working here for we're doing all this to get to dry firewood that we can get, get a fire going and in survival you know you're going to need fire And uh, this is gnarly, it's heavily seasoned, it's uh, like I mean, I like to make the knife work hard in testing and, and then you know it's not going to fail you in reality. This anvil, if you can see me, this dog bone anvil, you've heard me talk about this before, it's amazing. In, in, in a survival knife, it's absolutely amazing because it allows you to do so much more with your knife. Now, if you look down here, you can see this knife, is, this timber is so hard, it's working really hard, you know. But 1095, you know, it's, it's a super steel, it's been around for a long time. It's as tough as old boots, you know. And yet again with that anvil we can hammer our knife up. So this is a very well thought out tool. And like I said, the whole purpose of today's video, it's to demonstrate that it's not really that unconventional. But that anvil here on top, all, all the misconceptions about this knife is that it was it's so unconventional, it's hard to field maintain. But the design, anything that's odd about the design is on the back side of it, which requires no maintenance whatsoever. Now we're in a really heavy knot here. And the Mark II version has a much thicker handle which somewhere down the line I, I, I will get one so I'm just going to continue battening this down we'll come back to you, you don't need to watch all of this we'll be back to you in a few minutes okay so that's <coughs> the last of that vlog lit up. Edge is still sharp but <coughs> that doesn't surprise me and never should surprise when you're battening because after you make the initial impact it's the shoulders of the grind that is actually splitting the wood 
I just want to show you just over here the benefit of this dog bone. So we have an old stump here. So if we were looking for gloves or whatever, we can use this like a chisel to get into it. And that's the benefit of that dog bone. And it's also the importance um, of a, a saber or a scandy type tip because that's very, very strong and uh, it's not going to give you any problems. Uh, perhaps on a flat grind, this kind of leverage motion on a full flat grind could give you serious problems with, with, with your tip breaking, you know? And we, you'd be surprised how much digging and rooting you do with the tip of your surviving knife. So I'm just going to go back over here and just talk you through the knife again. So, what we asked for that knife there was probably far beyond what you'd ever expect a survival knife to be able to do. So just running through this knife again, the features that I like about it. Obviously we have a bow drill divot here in the G10 scales. We have um, approximately a 7 inch blade with a very large finger tool. Now, I really like this. People like it for the intention of working up close like this, which is great, yeah. But when you're cutting out fireboards, I like it. I, cut, I choke up on it like this and I use my thumb here. So it turns the knife. You have a lot of dexterity here now. It turns the knife into a smaller knife effectively. So. It's an actual pleasure to use, even though it's, it's it's touching on a large size size knife. I can't say enough about this dog bone. I just love it. It's yet again when you're rooting for grubs or whatever in rotten timber. It allows you to use this like a chisel, and uh, that's fantastic, you know. Um, the only downside that I've ever found with this knife um, was th the handles are a little bit thin. I've very large hands and the handles are a little bit thin, but that, that's addressed in the Mark II version of this. I've, I've said this before. Um, it's, it, it is a great knife, it really is. and I don't know why it ever got more noticed really as a survival knife because it's effectively the Swiss, a Swiss Army tool of the woods. And other knives try and achieve that, but they try to achieve it with adding quirks and things that are not so functional and difficult to maintain in the field. Whereas you still have just got this ulu kind of arc of a blade that is very easy to maintain, uh, a steel that's very easy to maintain. Oh yeah, while I'm here, sure, I'll show you. It has a great 90 degree spine. All in all, it, it is very well thought out. Um, so you might have to bear with me for this for a minute. I, I have a broken thumb at the moment. It didn't happen battening, it happened training last week. So I can't purchase on it like that like I normally would. Which is a bit awkward for me. But now and ever. So there's the knife for you guys. Um, I think it's. I really do think it's a great tool. Uh, it's definitely uh, lives up to its name. The SRT uh, self reliance tool. It it does a lot of things. It's a big knife without being too big. Um, and the company Habilis, they're definitely worth a look. Um, like I said, anything that I. I uh, recommend on this page. I, I appreciate the fact that you know your hard-earned money is going into these products, and uh, it's better for me to beat the crap out of these products than you have to do it. Uh, you know, and there's not a ding in that. And my God, I, I can't <laughs> look at the baton. That's a hickory baton. And um, you know, th this knife, although. Not considerably considered hugely thick in the in the modern day of quarter inch thick. It's three sixteenths, and um, it's just so strong because it it's a slab of steel to here, you know.
it's a great knife. It, it really is a great knife, and um, it mightn't suit everybody, but it, it definitely suits me. And I suppose it's not a glitzy knife, um, and the fit and finish on it is. Uh, it's not rough because everything is flush, but it's just, uh, I suppose, primitive, and that's what I like. Anyhow, guys, we've lots of stuff coming for test next week. We have uh, the Tops Kukri 7 that uh, Darren Stein's made up uh, a new Kydex sheet for me. We'll be testing that next week. Um, we have a new LT right knife in the door there the other day. Uh, we're going to be testing that. It's the Jessmuck. Uh, another unusual design but so far I, to be honest with you I took it out of the box and I said oh I don't know if I'm going to get on with this and uh, I, I, within minutes I was cutting out a, a, a fireboard and uh, it carves extremely well it just takes a, a little bit of getting used to coming from something like a Genesis but it, it's, it's actually really surprised me and it, it's a really good knife okay guys we'll see you soon have a good weekend